Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be unboxing, swatching, demonstrating, and of course reviewing this brand new Utopian Dream Mothership eyeshadow palette from Pat McGrath Labs. This just arrived on my doorstep a couple hours ago. I ordered mine directly from her website, that way I could use the promo code and get 10% off on launch day. But in case you haven't already ordered the palette, if you're interested, it is already available at Sephora. So that way you can earn your beauty insider points. I threw out the rules and broke my low buy to purchase this palette. What suckered me in was the exterior packaging. Of course, all of her packaging is really beautiful, but this rainbow queen design I think is so stunning. I actually think this is probably the most unique aspect of the palette, as beautiful as the color story is. I think a lot of these shadows in here are going to be pretty dupable. So I only have three other Mothership palettes, but I pulled out all of my Pat McGrath Labs palettes. They're sitting back here on the vanity. So once we unbox and swatch this palette, I'm going to see if I can recreate or dupe any of the shadows. Of course, inside the box, she included a little card that has all of the shade names. But again, I only have three of the Mothership palettes, so I would have to go through. I'm not sure if any of these are repeats. I think some of them are just similar to shades that she's done before, but she always gives them really fun names. So that's in there for your convenience if you like to know the names. At first glance, just opening up the palette, my first impression is that it's really beautiful. It's stunning. I love this color story. But there's a nice variety here of neutral colors and jewel tones. Like some of these shades over here, I think they're pretty wearable. Could be your everyday eyeshadows. I don't know if you want to pull out a large eyeshadow palette every single day, but if you do, I think you could make this palette work. And then you have a really nice mixture of the really sparkly colors, the duochromes. This is the reason why you are purchasing the palette, the iconic Pat McGrath Labs shades down there at the end. Now I'm going to move away, zoom in the camera really close, that way you can see the live swatches of this palette. This is Utopian Dream. This is Divine Rose 2. Are they 100% identical? No, but they are pretty close. In all of my Mothership palettes, there's a cream shade in the top corner. So this one is the new Utopian Dream. This is Divine Rose 2. This is the original Divine Rose. This is Bronze Goddess. There are a few other shades in this palette that I would say are similar, but not quite dupable to shades in my other three palettes. But again, I only have three of them. But it goes without saying, if you're purchasing this palette, it's probably not because you think it is so unique and so different from all of the other motherships. Chances are you are a Pat McGrath Lab stan and you just want to collect them all. I know there are so many people who just want to purchase all of the mothership palettes. And if that's the case, that's wonderful. But if this is in fact your first or one of your first palettes from Pat McGrath, I think you'll find that she has a pretty similar formula or equation to lay the layout of her palettes. Not formula as in the eyeshadow formula, but all of her palettes have a couple shimmers, a couple sparkly shades down here at the end. There's almost always a deep shade. Maybe it's not brown, but maybe it's burgundy or some sort of deep matte shadow. They all have this cream shade up here. She might tweak the undertone a little bit 
Would you really notice on the eye? Probably not. So you have that same shadow in every single Mothership palette. But then you get your variation. There's room to play with some of the shades in the middle. But I'm ready to get started. I zoomed you in nice and close and I've already completed the rest of my face makeup. I filled in my eyebrows and I'm planning to do two looks, one on each eye. So right now I have a Refer 15 brush. I think I'm gonna play it safe, safer, more neutral with one of the looks. Just to prove my point that I mentioned earlier that you could make this a very wearable palette. And then with the second eye, I'm gonna go more dramatic, more colorful. So for this look, I am just going to start in this matte shade right here. I thought this was going to be a duplicate. It's similar, but not quite dupable to some of the shades in my other palettes. I think the Divine Rose has a similar color. I really don't mind because you need those shades in the palette. That way you have somewhere to begin. If you only had one of those shades in one palette and all of the palettes were just so different and so unique, no duplicate dark shades or cream shades, then you would have to pull out multiple palettes to achieve one look. So with each of her Mothership palettes, they are so complete, which I love. It's a light buildable to medium mauve shadow. Perfect for the crease or as a transition. So pretty, blends really effortlessly and no fallout. Next, I've picked up a flat shader brush and I've decided I'm going into this bronze shade right here. You know, I didn't check my other eyeshadow palettes, like the quads and the six pan palette I have. There might be some dupes in there. I only went through the Mothership palettes, but this looks sort of similar-ish to one of the shadows in the Voyeuristic Vixen palette that I love so much. In fact, I just pulled out the Voyeuristic Vixen palette. This last quad right here on the end of the palette looks very close to this little quad. Not exactly the same, but pretty darn close. You have the deep chocolate, deep chocolate, cream, and cream. So if you really like the neutrals over here, you could probably get away with just purchasing this Voyeuristic Vixen, and I love this. So maybe that's why I felt so compelled to purchase this. So this is going all over the lid. I decided even though I'm going to keep this side neutral and do jewel tones over here, I don't really want to do a boring, wearable, everyday look. You probably want to see this palette really put to the test. That can come later. I'm quickly going back with my original blending brush and I'm blending out the crease just to soften the line. I picked up a Refer 14 brush and I'm going into this deep chocolatey shade and I'm going to use this for depth in the outer V. Once again, I'm going back with my original fluffy brush and I am blending that out. I didn't purchase the wand that launched at the same time as this palette. It's supposed to intensify the eyeshadow. It looks really cool, maybe a bit gimmicky because you could just wet your brush or use any sort of mixing fluid. There are a lot of similar products on the market. You don't have to use that wand if you don't want to. I do think the wand looks pretty convenient. And looking back, I wish I had just added it to cart, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna wet my brush using a little face mist that I happen to have here. And I'm going into this gold shade right here and I'm gonna pop that in the center of the lid. It never fails that anytime I go in with one of the really sparkly shadows from Pat McGrath Labs, I end up with flecks all over my cheeks, even if I wet the brush. So hopefully the wand has something a bit sticky that's gonna really grip the sparkles. Ooh, so pretty. I'm just quickly touching up the outer V. With a little precision brush, I'm picking up the cream eyeshadow. I'm going to pop that underneath the brow and on the inner corner. With 
with a pencil brush, I'm picking up our original shade and I'm gonna buff that beneath the lower lash line. Done. This is the type of look that I would create using my Bronze Goddess eyeshadow palette or the Mothership 5. Kind of a standard, smokier, soft glam look for me. So I think I could probably recreate something similar with other eyeshadows, but I like the fact that there's something that I'm used to that's neutral, that to me is wearable for a night out in this palette, because I'm not always gonna wanna jump into the glitters or this purple or this peachy shade right here. Sometimes I'm just gonna wanna do a look like this. So you can achieve both. I'm gonna finish eyeliner and mascara off camera and then I'll come back and I will show you the finished eye. Of course, it's all relative. I'm sure for some people, this is way too dramatic, way too much makeup, but this is actually my comfort zone. So now I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I picked up a Refer 15 brush. This might even be the same brush. I have a little paper towel down here that I've just been wiping all of my brushes off on. And I'm going to begin with this peachy shade right here. So this is going to be the transition on our left eye. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. They are pigmented, but they're incredibly blendable. And it looks really soft, like it doesn't look choppy or patchy at all. In the pan, it looks really peach. On the eye, it sort of looks Barbie pink. It's pretty neon, but I like it. Next, I have a flat shader brush and I'm picking up this pink shade right here. And this is going on the inner lid. Same brush, I'm now going into this shade right here which reminds me a lot of the Sextra Terrestrial, I believe it's called. And this is going on the outer lid. Next, with my same Refer 14 brush, I'm going back into the chocolate shade. This is really the only deep eyeshadow to create depth and dimension. So I'm using this on both eyes, but this is going in the outer V. With our flat shader brush, I'm going back and I'm just going to touch up both of the eyeshadows on the lid so they really stand out. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but I'm picking up this glitter right here and I'm going to pop that on the inner corner. Oh, that is so nice. I love the little duochrome effect. How it looks iridescent, it's really pretty. Going back with the precision brush, I'm picking up the pink sparkly shade. But this isn't really a sparkle, this is more of a metallic. And I'm going to buff this beneath the lower lash line. I just wiped it off, same brush. I'm going into the deep chocolate and I am going to take this as close to the lash line as possible and I'm concentrating on the outer half. Trying to connect to that outer V area. I added more of that top iridescent sparkle to the inner corner of the eye. I think it looks okay. I also added a little bit more purple. Next time, I will skip the iridescent, stick with the purple here, and then I'll go in with the kind of plain highlight shade 
instead of the sparkle. I think that might look a little bit better, but still, it's a really fun look. Dusting off my cheeks as much as possible, and this is the finished look for eyeshadow. I'm gonna do my eyeliner and mascara off camera, and then I will come back. Both eye looks are officially done. I added a lipstick as well. I pulled out my Pat McGrath Labs Naked Kiss, number 132. I think they go by names, not numbers, but it's called Naked Kiss 132. It comes in the gold sparkly tube that I love. And then I topped that off with my St. Jane Lip Gloss. This is the Luxury Lip Shine in the shade Bliss. It's just a really pretty nude gloss. I think any nude gloss would do. And this is the finished look. I wanted to choose something that would go nicely with both eyes. I wanted to keep eyeliner exactly the same on both sides, so I went in with a coppery brown eyeliner in the waterline. I did the Marc Jacobs Blitz Coin on the top lash line. I did the outer wing, a little baby inner wing, and then Gucci mascara, which I've been using for months now. That is my go-to mascara. Which look do you prefer? Let me know down in the comment section. If the answer is neither, that's fine too. It's my first time playing around with this palette. I actually really like both of these eye looks. I kind of thought, of course, I'm gonna like this side, but this side I really like as well. I would change things up. I might do things a little bit different. I would probably tweak the application, but I still think it looks really nice and not so dramatic and not so bright and colorful that I couldn't wear it out. I would definitely wear it for maybe a special occasion, date night, not an everyday look, but I still am very happy with the result. I think both of them turned out great. My only complaint is the same complaint I have about all of the Pat McGrath Labs palettes, which is that if you use the sparkle, it falls on your cheeks. That's it. None of the other eyeshadows really had that much fallout, and if I did see a couple specks, they were easy to just brush away. The problem is that when you try to brush away the sparkle, it almost just cements them in place. They don't go anywhere, they just psh, lay flat against your skin. So it's very difficult to fix that problem. I could easily just do my foundation last, go in with a glitter glue. I would definitely recommend wetting your brush, using a glitter glue, applying with your fingers, not a brush if you're gonna use any of the sparkles and the wand that she came out with probably would have fixed that problem for me. So that's my fault. I don't think I saw the wand at Sephora, just the palette, but if they get the wand, I'll probably pick it up. I wanna watch a couple reviews, make sure it's worth it, but if I think it's something that will really help my application and fix the problem, I'll purchase it from Sephora later on. Of course, if you really wanted to kick it up a notch, you could top this off with false lashes. I never wear false lashes. I avoid them like the plague. It has to be a very special occasion. I'm not gonna do it just for YouTube because I also think it's just not really that practical. I don't know, are you guys wearing false lashes every time you do your makeup? I'm certainly not. I think I wear them probably once a year. So I don't wanna set an expectation like this is what your eye is gonna look like if you purchase this palette because lashes totally change the look. If you're not going to wear lashes, if you just use mascara typically, if you're going out for a date night, this will be the end result or something similar to this. I zoomed you back out for the recap. Overall, I love this eyeshadow palette a lot more than I thought I would. I knew I would like it, but I guess in my head, I sort of thought it looks so familiar. I'll probably like it, but I'm just going to feel like maybe I should have just stuck with what I already had. Like it doesn't add anything new, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think this is probably going to become my favorite Pat McGrath Labs palette. The Bronze Goddess has been my favorite leading up to this point, but I feel like I can achieve the same look that I usually do out of Bronze Goddess with this palette. And I prefer the pops of color and the jewel tones and the sparkles in this one versus Bronze Goddess. I don't know, I really like them both. Let me grab it. See, this I think is a pretty wearable palette because you have a lot of neutrals, but then you have this red, and that's basically it. Everything else is very wearable, even this color right here. I use that a lot and I'll just pop that on the lid and it looks really fun and sparkly, definitely more of an evening look. But I love this palette. If I compare that with this new Hutopian Dream, it's tough. They're both so beautiful. And I don't really have to choose. I own them both now, so no complaints. 
I think now that I have this and I'm, I'm excited to use it, I'll probably pick this up more than this, but you really can't go wrong. I'm not a huge purple eyeshadow person, but funny enough, I think this purple sparkle is really pretty. Like a little pop of that on the lid, I think I could do more than a full purple look. I think I can use this and incorporate it with the other eyeshadows and probably get use out of it. This peachy shade right here, it looks so pink on the eye, but very pretty. Besides the purple, it's a pretty neutral palette. I think it's deceptively wearable. Because you look at that exterior packaging, it's rainbow. I think all of the promo has been very iridescent, rainbow swirls everywhere. But you can wear this palette. You can get a lot of use out of it. Could be an everyday palette if you just kind of stuck with those two shades. I give it a 10 out of 10. I think it's stunning. I love the looks I created today and I feel excited to keep creating looks using this palette. Low buy aside, I'm so glad I broke the rules to pick this up and add it to my collection. If you're a big fan of Pat McGrath Labs, you love collecting her Mothership palettes, this is just going to be another treat for you to add to your collection. You're gonna love playing around with it. It's so much fun. Now, if you're wondering to yourself if it's really worth it because her palettes are expensive, of course, they're heavy, you get a ton of product. Besides the price, if you're wondering if the colors are really something unique, not really. I think you could probably dupe most of the shades in that palette. The sparkly, shimmery shades are really the standouts. So if you don't like glitter and you know you're never going to use those particular shades in the palette, I would definitely skip it. The golds, the bronzes, the other shades, you probably have something really similar. That completes today's review. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked seeing the swatches and the eye looks I created and it was helpful in your decision making. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this palette. Are you impressed? Did you purchase? Have you played around with it? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.